Get it again, episode 45. We are talking Stargate SG1, season three, episode one, the premiere of the uh, latest series. When I say latest, of course, I'm talking 1999, boys. We are the Get It Again team. Yeah. Joining me, as always, Maddie. Well, hello. <laughs> 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 Brendan? All righty then. And Reese. Oh, Come on, hate, do something. Yeah, get oh, Don't let you always let us down, oh, son of a bitch. You put me on the spot. <laughs> oh, you're, uh, an, you're a generic oh, Aussie. I'm not good at theatre sports. <laughs> <laughs> and my name's Mitch. Well, that, that black t shirt would uh, say something different. Yeah. Oh. Stage hand. Yeah, backstage, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the talent, mate. I look after them. <laughs> that's why I'm gives... expecting a puppet show. Yeah, that's, oh, that's... That's, that's a sex move. Is that no? Oh, I'm that's, sure that is. Awesome. It can be. <laughs> All right, we are back after a week of talking the premiere episode of season three, the second half of a double up episode that really shouldn't have been a double up episode because if you listen to our season finale a few weeks ago, it was a clip show. We've been talking about this for like two years worth of uh, of Stargate, a whole year of getting a gate. The fact that they had a clip show to end a season. Yeah, and it was actually our worst episode. We ranked uh, it in wasn't our last our episode. Worst. Was it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it, yeah. It, was, it was. Collectively as a team, it yes, was our sorry, worst yes. episode. The Brendan's going to oh, look like... Saying, I, I thought, thought you meant that. like in terms of how many listens we had for the podcast. Oh, no, oh. no. Those numbers soared. <laughs> yeah. People love hearing how shit the clip <laughs> shows are. That was yeah. rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's kick off season three, episode one, Into the Fire with the DVD synopsis. It's, of course, part two of whatever that was for the season finale, season two, Hathor captures O'Neill and implants him with a ghouled symbiote that could eventually kill him, obviously. Meanwhile, O'Neill's rescue give party... give him really, really long life. ...is defeated. Like most yeah. Yeah. Yes. Eventually. <laughs> O'Neill's rescue party is defeated by Hathor's invincible energy barrier and time is running out. Is there any way to save O'Neill? I love at the start when she Good goes... Chance. When she goes, Cryo. we ask again... Just a recap from the last Yeah, episode. yeah, yeah. I love those scenes. Yeah, yeah. it's like, really? Let's put them I, two uh, together. Makes I no threw sense. it out to the socials, that being Facebook only. Uh, <laughs> let us know your thoughts and feelings about this episode or just a general shout out. And uh, Sarah Becker Bell from Sydney, she writes, Hammond is such a badass in this episode. Also, there are some great one-liners across the board. Also, <laughs> Brad, <laughs> Brad Ostron Mull. It makes Into the Fire a little easier to watch if you watch these together, but yeah, weakest two-parter in SG1. Mm. Can't disagree with Brad. Mm. Yeah. So uh, this is the second half of that story, and it's a pretty good way to kick it off. Like I know we're all excited to just get to this episode. You, Reese, though, you experienced the clip show with us. You are the new B2 Stargate. Where that's why we're all watching it with you to see what you think about it for the first time, knowing how awful the last bit was. Mm. Part two. Oh, mate, it was. Immediately better, the very first scene, Sergeant Walter. Oh, oh yes, yeah. yes. And it was like he never left. And I'm like, don't yeah. you try and pull that shit on us. <laughs> now, look, you like, gave him two starts last season. Yeah. I um, I did, I did make something to celebrate his return. <laughs> oh, That's when you push the buttons. Yeah. <laughs> That's just lazy. Bring it down, Mitch. Bring it yep. down. Get rid You're of it. You're not happy with it. Get rid of it. No, I thought, no, that's... I'm glad. I'm oh, glad you faded it. That. that is just lazy. He's la- and I said, no, I can do better. Oh, you've made something? So? Yeah, you've got to oh, preface no. it with that. Yeah, so now... This I've is... made something. No, I didn't. Well, you've got to say that, though. I didn't make something, though. <laughs> okay. I didn't make something. I just realised this is this is how we really need to welcome him back. Oh, oh. I like it. Walt. <laughs> Is that from 2010? Yeah. That's good. Where's this going? Okay, (laughs) alright. Yeah, alright. Get into Gate Remix. This This is worth the wait. I just thought, you know, you know, he's back. You had to had to honour the occasion. I feel like that was deserving of your, I made something. <laughs> Absolutely it was. No, <laughs> I'm saying I made something and trying to like lower expectations. I don't, I don't make it sound like I've made you... something in the basement out of human flesh. Well, you <laughs> might need to go back and re-listen. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it puts the lotion on what it made. <laughs> or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> oh, but yes, well, 
Greece. Uh, it's a good way mm. to kick it off. Oh, mate, yeah. And then just, just straight in, like, Colonel Makepeace, Major Davis. How good that's was that opener? When... Yeah. yeah. The that's follow a, in, the tracking shot. That's a shot. solid Martin Wood opener. Just oh. the tracking shot, just all the way through, just following it... through. Yeah, I, I know I made mention a few episodes ago, the, uh, the first Peter Deloise episode, and he did yeah. that for, I think, a little bit longer. Way. Yeah, the opposite way. And so yeah. I, was, I was like, oh, is this a Deloise episode? And then you see it's Martin Wood. You're like, okay, well, you know, yeah. they're, they're top two, top three. And written three, by so. Brad Wright, this one as well. Yeah. We've got the A-team. We've got the A-team here. Mm. Yep. But I noticed something again, if you're a DVD owner, Putting in disc one again was just like nostalgia coming back because there's these strange noises and the gate noises and the kawoosh and you're yeah, like, oh yeah. my God, <laughs> I'm watching Stargate again. <laughs> but then this is the start of special features. Oh, and God. this is just something that I well, I know Maddie loves as well, but something that I really enjoy about the DVD so much. And I forgot how late it was when it, the special features came in. But in disc one, there is something that's quite disconcerting because there's the trailer for season three, which mainly just shows shots of season one. <laughs> and then there's yeah. kind of like a featurette. And I just noticed... I've, I've got some sound bites for that for next week. I could not help but notice the extra superlatives that the voiceover guy would do. So just listen to this and see how... Oh, did you make something? No, I didn't. <laughs> this is legit special features. So it's just um, the superlatives that he throws at... It's just completely over the top. A journey to exciting new worlds began with just one step. Now the adventure for the next millennium soars ahead. Stargate SG-1. Richard Dean Anderson leads the way. Rocketing television's newest science fiction franchise to unprecedented popularity. Unprecedented. When a whole universe of That's provocative what? and awe inspiring adventure is encountered. There's only one team up for the challenge. With overwhelming critical acclaim, Stargate SG-1's first season attracted more viewers than any other new first-run weekly hour on television. That's very specific. Now, <laughs> entering its third market. successful season, Stargate SG-1 turns up the heat and brings home a fascinating new universe of spine-tingling action, spine -tingling. stunning special effects, and spellbinding drama. Setting a new standard of excellence with the most innovative and intelligent sci fi really adventure to ever oh, hit television. Like, mate, the DVD so climb aboard for one of the most extraordinary series ever. Ever. When the gate opens, the adventure of a lifetime begins. You just never know what will be on the other side. Oh, hey. Your species has great potential. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Richard Dean Anderson stars in Stargate. SG1. That's when he takes a break. Yeah, you are. The best show ever in the entire universe ever made. MGM Television. And that was that was like fully edited, mm. and that went for ages. Like he was really trying to sell that, yeah. like hardcore. Yeah. I had to cut out. Like that's cut in half because basically in between each wow. of those big superlatives, there would be like a twenty second break of just shots from previous, shots from previous, just blowing the money load, blowing the money load, blowing on all yeah. the stuff. And he'd start again. And it, the whole unreal. thing went for about four minutes. Well, that's a special feature, right? You yeah. can get that now on Stargate Command. You can pay for that. You can you pay can, for it. Yeah. <laughs> it's on worth, YouTube. Totally but worth pay it. For it. Yeah. Pay for it anyway. I can't wait. I can't. I it's can't, on YouTube. How long I, has it been on YouTube? Only 10 years. Yeah. Oh, well, not a big deal. I, Why would I, you go to YouTube if it's on Stargate? <laughs> yeah, but you get an Origin shirt. Oh, well, I mean, they not do. You. No, they do. Not us. We don't, but, no. you know. I'm just imagining one of our. If you want it. One of, <laughs> we, one of our listeners over in America, the, one of the lucky ones who's like currently wearing that mm. shirt. Yeah. <laughs> suckers. Yes. Suckers. Worst podcast ever. <laughs> send, send, us a, star. send us a photo of your shirt, and that way we can make iron on transfers off of it. <laughs> Yeah. In reverse, though, yeah, like <laughs> and uh, and then we can we can make our own here. Yeah, Catherine was here, nineteen forty-five. Was she? That's what no. it says in the back. <laughs> yeah, she like wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> 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 but the best thing about that, and I don't know when it actually starts, but it is the new millennium now. So we're in. I think it might even be halfway through the season. Yeah, this one premiered think... um, June of nineteen ninety-nine. Yeah, so we're still in still in the nineties here, and we hit the. Hit the Y two K about halfway through the season, ironically, and that's when Stargate gets fucking awesome. Like mm. this slow start on this season, but by the end of this season and the following like two seasons is just pure gold. Because so they're not wasting energy on the Y two K bug. They're like, oh, it. that's over. Yeah, we're yeah. sweet. 
curl. Let's full steam ahead. Get those riders out of that bunker. We can use them <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. That costs more than that Goa'uld in the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> I will put this in you. Oh, well, she's dead. Oh, yeah. Thank God. God damn it. <laughs> First Wizard of Oz reference to get into gay. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was appropriate. Nice. Because for me, I'm just like... Oh, thank you. Because we, yeah, yeah. we didn't actually see her die, so I'm like, oh, is she mm. actually dead? Like, is she just invisible and then just climbed out of it? Like, well, she survived. She survived fire last yeah. time. She can survive ice this time. Yeah. But I guess that mm. means we know. We were speculating at the end of last season. Did she actually create cryostasis? Yeah. She must have, because that's how she died. Deep yeah. Freeze. Yeah. yeah. Don't yeah, want to ruin anything they... for you, Reese. But she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> that's... You know what? I fucking hope so. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> And you, cause I she's in Origins, these. though. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Origins, she's still on Earth in that yeah. pyramid. Yeah. So right. she gets sure. out and goes and wrecks yeah. shop yeah. and then yeah. somehow and then gets, gets back in takes, and forgets about it. Gets Gua with amnesia yeah. um, and then goes back to takes sleep. Takes Catherine through the gate. Makes yeah. perfect yeah. sense. Oh, yeah. girls trip. <laughs> <laughs> so at the start, I... I'd forgotten watching the uh, the season finale half of, of this episode that there was a Tokra in the mix of, of Hathor's people. And then, so mm. this episode opens up. We've got the tracking shot. Like you said, they were upstairs. Where's the general? He's in his office. Hi, welcome back, Walter. It's like you were never gone. And, oh, yeah. uh, and goes, then... it's like we never tried to replace you. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go up there and he says, look, you know, uh, yep. Hi, nice to see you, Davis and make peace. What do you got for me? Oh, the Tokra said that, so they know where they are. And how'd you find that? Well, they've got, they've got someone in there. And then they cut back mm. to that scene. And immediately when that, female Tokra, well, yeah. Gould, scientist, mm. shoots uh, O'Neill to um, save the symbiote. I'm like, oh, obviously. Like, later on when they go, this is the big reveal, who it is. Yeah. I'm like, you gave Duh. it away before. Like, yeah. why the mm. why the fanfare now? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I think it was just an easy way to make Jack not get the Gould, but then they did yeah. it yeah. anyway. So yeah. it's kind of like, well, yeah. if he got it in the gate room, it would have taken over. They wouldn't have had a chance to put him in the cryo freeze and... Yeah. And then and it later just on, dies. Later I on, don't get that. Later on, Carter rocks up and sees like the Tokra like collapsed on the floor because she's just been bitch slapped by mm. um, Hathor, and, and Jack's <laughs> kind of like all sound like, but it's like Carter already knows she's a Tokra now. Mm. Like she was never told that that chick was a Tokra. As far as she knows, she's still the Guild scientist. Yeah. But maybe maybe it was women's intuition. Maybe it was jo- maybe it was Jolina. Jolina, Jolina, I recognised her. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> Absolutely. Not not in not in the first part of the episode. No, no, no. 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 Same way. Um, Are you a good witch or a bad witch? <laughs> <laughs> now that they've got like money, like they've got budget for this episode, they can just pull those little things out of their heads, and we don't see any flashbacks in this episode. Yeah, <laughs> it's like well, we don't. We've yeah. got money. It's fine. So they'll just pull them out. It's fine. Yeah, we got yeah, more in money. In the last yeah. episode, it was like. Jack's like, can we pull this out? And, and Carter's like, oh, I wouldn't. It could take your brain with it. And then the, the to- <laughs> Tokra chick, Tokra chick's like, yeah, just pull it out. I'll just rip it out. I, I found that scene really weird and I la- actually laughed out loud with my headphones on while the kids were sleeping. I'm pretty sure I woke <laughs> them up. The, the Tokra dies, or so you thought, the first time. Yeah. Mm. And then she's lying against the wall. And then, <laughs> yeah. and then they're just talking like, what if this happens? And she's like... Her eyes light up, and you're like, yeah. "This is what it is." I'm like, oh! I thought she was dead." Yeah, like, what the? F-? And then she, she tells says, him the whole exposition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> knows knows everything. Yeah, tells them tells them to go to the gate room because that's where the generator is. Yeah, there's three gate rooms. Remember, because there's three. <laughs> yeah. They just happen to go to yeah. the right one. Mean. And then what I love the best part is like, oh, sh- sh- should we help her? She kind of just said, like, she's like, "No, my my symbiote will heal me." Neck minute, the entire place blows up. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as we know, that Tokra didn't get out of there. Hopefully one of those gate yeah. rooms were real. Yeah. She used that gate. Basically, so what um, Hammond was saying is that they sent, what, half a dozen SG teams in to save them. Yeah. And then there was, what, half a dozen still off base, off, uh, off world, what I'm assuming. So I'm just trying to work out how many SG teams there are at the moment. I think SG-11... Is the highest one at the moment? Is it? Or like it, it's I, up to all yeah. Did we get an answer late last season, or is it in one of the upcoming episodes where they talk about adding another three teams to the roster or something yeah. like that? Is that? Yeah, does that sound Hammond, familiar? Hammond said that. Yeah, he did. Yeah, so I I'd say know. we're at we're at probably twelve to to fifteen. But yeah, obviously there'd be other teams that are out, you know, on long term, mm. you know, reconnaissance and 
science missions and stuff like that. So yeah, he only he does that whole uh, volunteers only, and they all step forward before yeah, he yeah. can finish. Oh, yeah. That was pretty cool. But... Yeah, that was that was nice. It's like, well, SG One did kind of save the planet, so I guess we kind yeah. of should go and save. Yeah, <laughs> we miss Tilk. Bring Tilk. We want Tilk to move back home. It was actually yeah. that scene where I'm like, well, th- this this whole show. While it's about the team and missions and stuff, like it's basically the story of Tilk. Like at least these early seasons, where it's him, you know, finally breaking free of Apophis and then realizing what I guess his destiny is, which is to free the Jafar. And mm. you know, this episode he's back to True Like, and like you, you just think that he's leaving. You know, he's oh well, if you guys are not mm. going to go and save my team, then mm. I'm just going to bail. And you're like, oh come on, man, I get that it's the season finale, but why? And then this opens up. It's like no, he's actually going there to yeah. create an army so he can go and do it himself. And you're like. You're awesome, Teal. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like his his speech yeah. in here, like his rallying cry to everybody. Yeah. I feel like that's more than he said the entire of last season. Yeah, yeah, oh, and how much like, emotion, like, and passion and anger did he have in that speech? Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, who is this guy? You, you, you didn't watch you like Core that, Eye, but that that was <laughs> that was close to that, yeah. but obviously not as good. But mm. over the next few seasons, he gets. I think this is where it clicked for that for that story that because yeah. they kind of had forgotten about the whole Tilks trying to liberate his people. Yeah, and yeah, that sort yeah. Of stuff. So seeing what Christopher Judge can do when he's given some meat, mm. it's like we mm. get more awesome, passionate sort of speeches like that from him. Where yeah. yeah. yeah so it's, and that is real. This is really the start of the Jafar Rebellion too. Like this is point, yeah. you know, point zero. Well, pretty much up, up to this point, it's like Tilk is the only Sholvar. Braytek's kind of helping him, but Braytek's kind of working both sides. And he says he does have a couple of other loyal Jafar, <laughs> but it's all kind of, you know... Yeah, on the, on the down not... low, but now Tilk's just like standing out in front of people. Just yeah, <laughs> I don't. That's what I don't understand. How can Braytac openly help Tilk and then not cop anything from Apophis or any of the other Goa'uld? Mm. Like it's like I'm fine because I didn't defect. Yeah, he does seem know. to be able to walk in both worlds very freely, yeah. like out daylight through public streets and yeah. houses and stuff, and everyone's like, "Oh, it's Braytac, cool man." Yeah, like mm. you seem a bit shifty, and you're the guy who mentored Can I see you Tilk. With the Shulva? Yeah. Yesterday, <laughs> Pretty... no, nah. I killed all those priests. If, if, <laughs> the only time he helps Teal'c is when he's wearing like a serpent head, <laughs> just to, just yeah. to hide his identity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like the Jafar Batman. Even though his his armor is completely different to everybody else's. Yeah, he's got that like one off the shoulder Magneto cape. Yeah, he does. <laughs> like, yeah, and then Hammond pulls his hood off. Like, oh man! Yeah. Was so I wouldn't. Cool. I wouldn't hey, even call that. A, I would, I'd call that a sock. But it was so tight. <laughs> on his head. <laughs> I just want to do that every time we mention Hammond from yeah, now on. Nice. Yeah. Well, he's got a pretty big head, you know. How much? Like, how little did Daniel give a f- during that entire thing? Oh, oh my god! Yeah. No, I put. I know we had a week <laughs> off last week, and that was the image I made up because I really wanted to, to to talk about that. The d- deadpanning. Well, he of Daniel the entire. F- the episode, I'm like, dude, give a shit. Well, I feel like he had no lines for the first 20 minutes, and he, I feel like he was just throwing a tantrum. He was like, well, I'm not going to have any lines. No, I think that's I'm absolutely. No, he had a he had a gash on his leg. Well, no, once yeah. once he got the gash, then he was. I knew one of you would laugh. As soon as I said gash, I knew one of you two would laugh. But I feel, until he, it's like it's. I feel like he was on set and he's like whinging. He's like, Matt, I've been here for three days. I haven't had a single line. Yeah. yeah. Give me something to do. And then Martin Woods Need gone, oh, look, someone shoot Daniel in the leg so he's got motivation for this episode, please. And they just thrown it in the last minute. <laughs> but then when they did, like he gets shot in the leg and someone comes and goes, you're right? He goes, yeah, I just got shot in the leg, but I guess I'll be fine. I'm like, oh, yeah. fuck off, mate. It's like Deep bleeding gash. <laughs> they're yeah. saving a life and now they're also trying to help you now that you're injured. Is he, like, is he, God, up- he really, really but, fucking pissed me off in this episode. He, no one did first aid on him. No, yeah. <laughs> At all. Yeah. yeah. All right, chuck a towel on that. Is he upset because no one's made any comment about his new haircut? <laughs> yeah. Is yeah, he expecting so. like, Guys, oh, I literally oh, woke Daniel. up from a bath and yeah. this was my head. That's yeah. why he's pissed off because his hair's gone. They O'Neal cut his hair went grey. Yeah. My ages... hair got shorter, but nothing happened to Carter. What? Yeah. Oh, oh, that'd be Jolinar. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I, n- I didn't even notice that Daniel was deadpan the whole time. Uh, first 20 minutes, he like even when Jack is literally being like implanted with a goo old, like mm. he's just deadpan. Oh, yeah, they he's cut like, to him. He's oh. like, mm. I thought he was trying to play like he was... He's like, oh, well, surely something will come along. Tilk will show whatever. up last minute and save the day. <laughs> nope. Oh, well, my, well. Be- my best friend and the guy who <laughs> saved my life multiple times just got implanted with a girl wool, just like my wife. I have no reaction to that. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, every goddamn week. <laughs> like, at least Carter was like, oh, shit, we're next. But Daniel was just like, oh, maybe he's like, oh, I'll just f- my way out of this with Hathor and I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's my backup I'll just, plan. I'll just bang my way out and I'll be fine. Hey, um... Did you guys want to know what's 
uh, what's been happening? Across the universe. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is probably the biggest stretch I've, I've got so far. I don't even know whether Brendan will, will like, click onto this one. Oh, Jeez. challenge. Accept yeah. it. But, uh, <laughs> I was going to say yes, just for spite. <laughs> <laughs> in the back end of season four, in an episode called The Light, yeah. we meet an SG member called Lieutenant Barber. Maybe yeah. Spoiler go alert: He dies in the opening before the before the yeah. credits. Before the credits. Oh yes, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Spoiler of a previous episode. <laughs> well, yeah. his backstory is that in June of 1999, when this episode aired, he was finishing a tour of um, Operation Allied Force in Kosovo. He'd finished that tour, and his performance in that as like a gunner and all that sort of stuff is actually what piqued the interest of General Hammond, who then recruited him. Into the SGC. And that's what's been happening. <laughs> Across the universe. <laughs> oh, the good old wave diver. What are you doing about? <laughs> Classic. It was a stretch, but I thought, you know. No, it's still good. There, I like it. I put it that in. It's good. <laughs> I like it. How much? In. How much is Hammond like keeping aware of? Like, as if that guy hasn't got oh, enough shit to He's do, got right? his fingers in a few pies. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, Reese, what did you think of the needle threader? Oh yeah, that was that was sweet. I thought it was quite convenient that it was in the bush, mm. but um, yeah, no, I've mean, been there for a hundred years. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> the battery wasn't dead or anything like that. It was it's fine. solar powered, obviously. Yeah, um, what I thought was just quite... take the branches off it. I mean, that's a massive tactical advantage we have now. Like we can just like two people can jump in that ship and just go straight through the gate and take out anything on the other side. Mm. Like, yeah. so you excited to see it again? Well, judging from your dead <laughs> <hand> face. <laughs> <laughs> and we never um, did. Well, that's a yeah. shame. We that's never a shame. Never yeah, that that seems like a good bit of kit. Mm. But you're right. I just like the idea that you know you got your Brad Wright, your Martin Woods, and, and all the heads of Stargate, and they they take it to like the line producer, and they're like, oh, "This shit, oh, this shit, neither thread." They're like, "How much that cost?" Yeah, you're not using that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll right, do it this write one that time. Write that shit out. Write that it was the only ship of, of its kind in existence. <laughs> yeah. It's basically the Millennium Falcon. It ran out of fuel <laughs> after that mission. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, well, we're going back to the Walter Diaries, guys. Oh, nice. I've cracked oh. out the Walter Diaries. Oh, you finally cracked the next code. I mean, I feel like it would have been better when we didn't have Walter, but... Well, there you know. Well, you, I guess we'll find out in the Walter Diaries <laughs> what he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to go back because I was really excited when he came back. I know we touched on this already. Mm. But I just had a nitpick because when Colonel Makepeace comes through the gate, he runs there, he goes into the control room and shakes Walter and goes, Where's General Hammond? I'm like, if there's an unscheduled off-world activation, mm. that motherfucker is in that control room. Mm. Mm. But instead, he's just talking to Major Davis about about the expanse of the universe or something like that. <laughs> I'm like, really? Does he really need a lecture about that? Just tell him you need three teams. Anyway, <laughs> after just before that scene, he's he turns over to Walter, and then Walter has a desk in the briefing room, like a separate computer desk. Did you, anyone notice that? Well, it's sometimes manned by like extras and stuff like that in the back. That's the one I was talking about. Oh God, I think back in season one. Yeah, with the table. Where when the table gets split, the conference table gets split so they can put a camera through. A lot of the time that'll be an extra or just a grip or someone like that in an SG uniform. Yeah. So when the camera pans through, they'll push all the chairs of the table together and then they'll just go and sit down at that chair so that they were It was in the just such room, a strange shot because it, kind of, it was like a wide shot and they're like, hey, Wal- Walter, obviously they didn't say Walter, but he's like mm. looked up. I'm like... That was another bit that made me just laugh out loud like that. Toker well, maybe bit. I was just like, "What is going <laughs> maybe on?" Maybe to get him back, they had to promise him his own desk. No, that's what I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. Is that they they go up to him, they say, "We need you back." He's like, yeah. "I got a couple of terms, yeah. General. Yeah. I want a promotion <laughs> and he, yeah. a I sergeant. Want, <laughs> I want two cardigans <laughs> and I want." And I want a desk. I want a desk, want a desk in, desk the, in briefing the briefing room and yeah. debriefing room. That's right. I want to hear before and after the mission, and yeah. I get to bring a pen and a pad so I can write my own fan fiction <laughs> yeah. in and the corner. Oh, my I want diary. A we'll give you, give you your own hook to hang your coat on. Yeah. Deal. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> yes. With yes. my name on it. Yes. Yes. In Sharpie. Yeah. <laughs> Puts his own name on it. Yeah, but I just thought that was weird because he would have had to follow Make Peace up the stairs, sit at his desk, pretend he's doing an email, but really listening to General Hammond. Yeah. Classic Walter. <laughs> but isn't, isn't it... He's like, done I know it all season. We spoke about it all last season that we missed him. Why? Who are these other two idiots that are trying to replace him? Yeah. And then when Makepeace runs up the stairs and sees Walter, because where's the general? I'm like, I didn't think anything of it. Like, that. there's Walter, whatever. Yeah. It was only when he left. I'm like, hang on. Walter hasn't been here for f***ing ages. I'm like, that's how little impact 
wannabe Sarah Silverman and the mini mm. slightly darker toned Walter made <laughs> in season two. I'm like, why do they? What honestly do they try? And, I think we're calling him Steve Urkel. Steve Urkel yeah. sure. and, and Amy Schumer. Oh yeah, oh, right. Poor man, yeah, Sarah sorry. Silverman. Yeah, poor man, Sarah Silverman. Yeah. <laughs> Amy Schumer. Amy Schumer. So Walter's Diaries. Walter Diaries. This so this one's labelled the Walter Diaries Part Two: A Long Road Back. Oh, he named them as well. Mm. He does. What? So he didn't have he didn't write anything else in between the first one and this one. No, he was just and you'll busy. find out why. Ooh. All right, here we go. <laughs> Gate technicians, personal log. <laughs> Stargate S3. That's one. Zero, one. Rounded off to the nearest decimal point. 1998 was a big year for me. Hard work and dedication led to the role of head gate technician at the SGC. A highly coveted role in my line of work. I was truly humbled. The peak of my career, of course, came with Apophis attacking Earth. With two motherships in the sky, I was able to detect the flash from a shock grenade on Chlorel's Hatak Peltak. A feat that not many could have achieved. I believe that was the turning point of the invasion, which led to SG-1 to victory. Reveling in the hype and glory of battle, that's when things took a turn. I became cocky, sure of myself. I was at the top of my game, baby. <laughs> classic, classic Walter. Just writing in his own diary, yeah. baby. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Chevron 5 encoded. Chevron 6 encoded. Chevron 7 locked. Chevron 7 locked. I could do it in my sleep. I would dream about the power that that one word had to create a wormhole. Centuries in the making. Light years in length. Chevron 7 locked. 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 <laughs> how, does, how do you write a whistle? Wah, wah. <laughs> this is all in here. How do you spell that? W H A W H A Kawush. Oh, so that's phonetic. Okay. All right. And then he got an email. But that's when things got dark. I started to take bets on who would make it back through the Stargate alive. I would threaten those around me who wouldn't pay or who wouldn't play ball. After all, I was in charge of the Iris. I could make it so. Holy crap, we were right. <laughs> but I was brought back to reality with a simple filing error. I was placed on the night shift for six months. It was the end. I went on a bender. I womanized and I spoke out of turn. I can't be sure, but when I was in DC after sucking on a, a beer bong, oh. <laughs> I started spouting about the SGC, the Stargate program, and traveling to other galaxies. I thought a journalist might have overheard me, but you know nothing came out of that, so I'm not too worried. Probably nothing in the end. Funnily enough, he's never seen that journalist ever again. <laughs> yeah, well, mustn't have heard him. Mm. <laughs> but now I'm back from outer space in the Stargate on the straight and narrow. I'm a simple man, but I will reach that pinnacle again. Like detecting that shock grenade from so far away, I will save this world again. <laughs> if I have to travel back in time to save an ancient species from total annihilation, <laughs> I'm going to save Earth. <laughs> if I have to tear this universe out of the black hole, I'm going to save it. I've got to, Mr. <laughs> That's two. Wow. Well, it was three because he said make it so. Jeez, well. <laughs> <laughs> didn't he get excited at the oh, end of this? Wow. He did. It's in caps, all caps with an exclamation like point. Do you feel when he was like at his lowest and there was just like strippers and that, do you reckon he had seven? <laughs> lowest? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's peak, man. But do you reckon he had like seven of them lined up, named one through, no, named, all named Chevron? <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> seven. Seven strippers, all named Chevron. I'm going to encode you. I'm yeah. going to encode you. I'm going to encode you. I'm going to lock you. Yeah. <laughs> Chevron, seven locks. <laughs> We're going out of the galaxy. Chevron, seven encoded. <laughs> oh, Chevron, oh God, eight locked. I'm, go I'm going back through time. <laughs> Oh, wow. Anyway, so that's all he's got. He is just so much wow. more complex than I ever gave him to isn't he? Just a lowly gate technician. And he like <laughs> he just doesn't he, he doesn't seem like that sort of outgoing guy. Mm. No. I the only other thing you might notice, Reese, was that make peace when he was telling uh, um Hammond, he said we got word from a Tokra spy. And that's what we call Tokra Intel trope. Yeah. How do you well, know that? It? Tokra. Yeah. Jolina. <laughs> yeah. All right, that is episode one, season three, Into the Fire. 
Get in a gate, episode 45. We'll be back next week to talk Seth. Just, oh. just, just on the um, yes, McFarlane. <laughs> the um, the name of this episode. Green, actually. <laughs> a- apparently, it's a play on "Out of Mind." Was supposed to be a play on like "Out of the Fry Pan," mm. and then this one's "Into the Fire." Yeah, that's the lamest title like ever. Yeah. Ever time. Until then, you can uh, check out all of our podcasts on SoundCloud and iTunes. Drop us a line, get it into gate at gmail dot com, or find us on the socials: Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Big thanks to everyone who's been uh, dropping us a line on iTunes. Actually, uh, a lot of five star reviews coming in. We do appreciate you listening to the show and also rating us, spreading the news of Get Into Gate to uh, fellow Stargate. Lovers out there in the world. There are a lot of us out there. That's why we do on the show. So a big thanks to spreading the word for everyone who has. Mm. Yeah, and if you can leave a review, that'd be good. So Reese is now going to do a freestyle rap with your names in it. <laughs> oh, Go. Shit. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> with the... Uh, oh yeah! Come yeah, on, man! I'm gonna read the reviews, man. They're gonna be sick. I got one here from Ash Inca '96. Oh, he said, yeah. "Never before have I cried from laughing at 4 a.m." Man, your show is heaven. No, I had to add that heaven part in because <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't right. It's a freestyle, mate. It wasn't, it. it wasn't rhyming. <laughs> No, Ash Inca 96, he says, uh, Never before have I cried from laughing at 4am and woken up the next morning wondering whether the hell I'd imagined the whole thing. Love it. I think the same thing after we record sometimes. I wake up the next morning going, Was it yeah. all a dream? Yeah, what's that? <laughs> wake up the next morning and go, Oh, that is going to be so loose, that episode. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's like, surely those things we said we didn't record. Yeah. <laughs> And let people listen to. No. And it's like, God, I hope Mitch didn't continue to edit once he got home when he was tired and left all yeah. that into the final cut because that's never happened before. All right, next rap. Oh, yeah. oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm just going to do this rap, man, and then I'll be done. I've got one here from MB Jack 0711. Yeah. Yeah, that's. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> he says, uh, this podcast is a blast to listen to each week. The one downside is that I now have to go go out and buy Stargate SG One complete series so I can watch the episodes along with the podcast. Rats! Oh, just just get all access at Stargate Command. Yeah, yeah but watch them watch them quickly. Cause... It's only yeah. forty bucks. Yeah. Yeah, watch two a day minimum. 40. Yeah, probably got, more now. You've got less than eight months to, <laughs> to get through it all. But you get to watch Origins. <laughs> So I couldn't, <laughs> Could, I couldn't complete couldn't that do sentence. It, couldn't do it. <laughs> hey, at least you give it a shot. Hey? So, so. Uh, so this one, and the last one is from New Mexico Murky. Uh, these dudes are engaging and fun to listen to. Hey, thank you, mate. Caught myself laughing out loud uh, at work a few times. Only downside so far is that Brennan is shit. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, that I was waiting for something. <laughs> um, uh, sound leveling issues. But uh, but even that doesn't keep me from coming back. So thank you, New Mexico Murky. So yeah, big thanks to everyone dropping uh, those reviews onto our uh, iTunes podcast. You personally, you can find me, Mitch underscore Lewis, on Twitter and Instagram. Maddie, where can we get you? You can find me and I regret everything. <laughs> oh, no, uh, at High Pitch Maddie on Instagram. Oh, I've got personal there, Brendan. <laughs> at the Brendan Gibson on Instagram. And Reese. And I'm at the Flying Gibson. And we'll see you back next week to talk Hathor 2.0, a.k.a. Seth for episode 46 of Get Into Gate. We'll join you then. All right now. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Getintogeek.com.